everybody. Donna Woods here from Photonic Health. And today's episode of Health Made Simple features one of our ambassadors, Miss Sherry Menching. Sherry, welcome. We are Thank so you. excited to have you here. Sherry, uh, you live in the Pacific Northwest. You yes. have been an acupuncturist for a human acupuncturist for 22 years. It's 2023 right now. So you've been a human acupuncturist for uh, 22 years and um, you had a bit of a life change and you moved. And I think it pretty much sort of opened up a whole new world for you, if I'm not mistaken. It did. It did. I, um, I have now just a little under 40 years of meditating. And I know that that has impacted my career's many. I have several careers. One of them is acupuncture and herbalist. Um, and I know that in the meditation, there's a deep connection you have with using your intuition, creative visualization. Those are the two techniques that I often talk to people about their animals. Uh, the connection that you have, you cannot look at something and cringe and expect your animal not to respond. You right. have to have this faith that I'm going to send you a telepathic picture. This is your healing. And I use needles, and uh, well, that was the beautiful thing. Moving from Boston back to the Pacific Northwest, I had clients in the East Coast that wanted sessions still. So I started doing needles over the phone just roughly a little under 10 years ago. And wow. I was getting the same same re results. They were relieved of the migraine. They were relieved of the sciatica pain. Um, and so it was really quite incredible. That freed me up from having any licensures to this date anyway, there isn't any. Uh, right. It freed me up to answering to a board. It also got me involved with working with animals because I started working on difficult cats, uh, dogs that would stop, you know, start peeing in the house. And so I'd give them needles in the bladder channel. Right, yeah. energetically, energetically. Yes. Energetically. I, I love that. We yep. have been doing energy work um gosh you know we got involved in red light therapy back in 2002 we were first in introduced to it and i believe there are no accidents in life and there is nothing called the coincidence no. um, everything happens to put you on the path that you're meant to be on and exactly. um it's a little bit it's a story that like we don't we haven't shared a lot but one of the reasons that we went into business um, and Brian really got involved is I'm very intuitive. And so I feel things in my body. So if I connect in with somebody else's energy or another animal's energy, I can pretty much feel what's going on. And so um, when we got involved in red light therapy, I would just put the lights in places that I was like, oh, I, you know, I was being directed. And then people started going, why did you choose that point? Right. And, I mean, this was in 2002, and let's just be really honest here, like nobody was talking about energy work, um, and it certainly was not mainstream. Even today, if you talk to some people about energy work, they sort of get all right. cringy. Um, and so that was one of the reasons that uh, Brian really jumped on board, because he's like, because I'm like, I, I don't know, and he's an engineer, and for him, like the whole meridian, all the meridians, all the acupuncture points, it was just like a big wiring schematic for him. Right, right. <laughs> and, 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 um, and it, and, you know, we didn't start like we, do, our specialty is not people, our specialty is animals, but we learned really early on, if I'm illuminating a horse, and I've got another horse that's even in the same barn, but not you know, the horse that's in the same barn is getting the exact same benefit and having the exact same releases um, yes. as the horse that we're actually putting lights on. So yes. I love that, that you discovered this. Um, it, it's life-changing and- It really, it really is. You know, I have to, re this is recalling me to a memory. Uh, Hair wig showing had a process called reconnective therapy. I caught him in New Mexico. I went to school in Santa Fe. 
uh, I caught him in Cerritos, New Mexico, and he looked like Rutger Hauer with this big straw hat. There were holes in it, and the sun came down like these rods of gold. And he walked up to a very 21, 22-hand horse. He put his palm on the mane, and I literally saw energetically the horse turned into a pony. It, it, it succumbed to him, right? So I had been taking classes with him, things like... When you are drinking a pitcher of water, you put love on the handle. So when your brain sees it and you're pouring a cup, you're drinking love. Yes. So I label my dog's bowls with intuition or I send Lexi telepathic messages. No, let's not go to the right. Let's go to the left. And she does. I mean, we've been doing it now for seven years, so she's getting really good. Um, right. So what you're saying about intuition is a very key model for why my bedside manner with acupuncture folds nicely into the photonics. I have some clients that will settle for over the phone needles, but as soon as I come to town, they want the real ones. So yeah. this translation where some people want to have the pad because we're electromagnetic. Yeah. We, we are, and we respond to that. The blood is iron. That's why acupuncture needles affect the meridians. And so when I saw your books, I thought, oh my God, this is right up my alley. These meridians I already know. And Yay! Yes, yeah, it, it made I love perfect that. Sense. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah, and it, it's a it's an interesting thing because um, in the past couple of years, the world has really gone into the science. Like we need to have the science. We need to have the science. We need to have the science. Fortunately, right. red light therapy has got tons of science behind it finally um or at least it's coming to the forefront now the science has been behind it for a very long time people just weren't really open to that um right. but the but i'm uh, but but so when we, we can talk about light therapy from a scientific perspective but i love to talk about it from an energetic perspective um, right. That's one of those things like we actually have a class um, that teaches people how to do remote healing using their lights. Um, oh. And we've been doing that. Um, it's an online class now, but we've been doing that um, ourselves on, you know, our own personal friends and clients, animals. Like when, you know, I had a friend that her horse had colic surgery and um, colic surgery doesn't have a good outcome. It's like you got a 50-50 shot because right. they base, it's basically a resection. And um, two days after the surgery, the horse was not doing well. And she had to put lights on where she knew how to do it. But, you know, she was too, I mean, it was her heart horse. And right. so we did it remotely. Um, and uh, gosh, this was over 10 years ago. And the horse is still here today. Um, and so it just, the science is out there. I don't know that people are open to that information yet. I, I think more and more we're coming into a time frame where people are going to have to rely on themselves. And they should because the human is supposed to be self-healing. The human is supposed to use that trajectory of thought directs energy. You think sick and tired, you get sick, you get tired. You think someone's stolen, you'll find something gone. Because yeah. it's a it's a connection of where you're half empty, half full. So, you know, how I even got into photonics was I had my doodle in Kalispell, Montana. I had a job up there. I'm a colorist, too. I use color a lot. I use it in the healing, but Yay. I also am a contractor. So I was up in Kalispell, and Lexi was recovering from the TPLO. She had her right kneecap sawed off and the the vet just kept telling me the surgeon in spokane said you know her recovery is up to you and i said no problem i'm german she's swiss and french i'm german we're gonna get this thing handled so i had to have her on a four foot leash everywhere in the yeah. kennel at the dining room table she never she didn't get to sleep on the bed she had to be on the floor and I was staying with a woman who had 14 dogs. And she goes, you might want to try this photonics pad. And I go, what is that? And so I got online and I Googled. I like research. I got online and I Googled and I read a lot of things. And she goes, you know, you just turn on the pad. You do this, set and forget it. I said, oh, great. Well, I propped her up. I used the multi-light first. Yep. I always start with the basics. Yep. And I started with the green. And yep. I propped it up. She lifted her head, looked at me and went to sleep. 
And then when it turned off, I just played around on me. I know, but I just played around on me. And then the next morning I put it on. She got the multi-light four to five times a day. Wow. When I went back, I was supposed to go back to the vet in 21 days. I went back in 14. Lexi was jumping and I was going, calm down. He looked at me and goes, this is not a post-surgical dog. What are you doing? I told him. That I vet that. has now called me back because they've had a dog that was hit by a car just four months ago. This was last April for Lexi. Four months ago, they said, we got a dog. He's been hit. He's been in our, our, our vet clinic right now for about six hours. He won't get up. He won't, won't drink water. You know, we have a pad down here from one of our clients who bought it from you. And okay. so I'd like to know what we should do. And I said, well, first of all, stay calm. Keep your thought forms clean. Don't gasp and get stressed out. Just gently lay it over the area of where it was hit. They wrote me back a text later. 25 minutes later, the dog got up and drank. Oh, oh my God. I love that. Incredible. Yeah. That's, that. Thank you for sharing that. Those are stories that that's still why we do what we do. Like, oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I mean, these are, un they're unbelievable, you know, almost unbelievable. It, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, we've seen, we've, we've, we personally have story after story after story and our clients do too. And, you know, we've been, we've been in business now since 2009. So, um, you know, sometimes we don't hear a lot of the, how it worked. Um, we know it works because our return rate is like next to nothing. Um, but, yeah. uh, you know, like just to be able to hear, hear those stories, it still just absolutely melts my heart because yeah, I, I have, um, do you have time for a cat story? Absolutely. We love I have a, I I have a client in Wisconsin. I, a lot of these people I've never met with the needles. I treat in Australia, Paris, Germany. I'll, they'll hear from a friend. I'll deal with their three-year-old child that is having, uh, you know, past life regressions and they don't know what it is. Right. Um, yeah. So it's interesting. So this woman calls me. She has a seven-year-old feral cat named Oprah. The okay. cat is Calico. <laughs> It never comes into the house ever. She got a multi-light and then she ordered the pad. She was using it with her husband back and forth. And she said the cat came into the kitchen and just stared there at the doorway. The first, second or third day that they were using the, the devices. Wow. And then she said the cat came in and sat up on the couch. She was dumbstruck. She goes, Sherry, if, if you would have told me the story, I would have said, really? Come on. Right. But this is my cat of seven years, feral, doesn't sleep in the house, is now coming in and watching. She jumped up on the couch. I put the pad next to her just as a little cradle because I thought she was going to run. She, she fell asleep. Yep. Yay. That cat is now being groomed, petted, Aww. and is inside. Now, that I think that is remarkable. Yeah. Remarkable. Yeah. You know, it can't, cats are so interesting there, you know, there's a meme that was going around Facebook um, or social media just last week. And it was about, if you want to get grounded really fast, grab a cat, hang out or, you know, yeah. put a cat on your lap, <laughs> yes. um, not grab a cat, but, you know, put a cat on your lap because they're very, they're very highly, what we've been taught. And from our experiences, they're very highly evolved, advanced souls Right. And um and and they are very grounding and they're super they're so unbelievably intuitive. And so they're not so much, you know, we've been we've had handhelds out for a long time. And in certain cases, the cats will tolerate the handheld lights, but sometimes it's just too much energy for them. Mm -hmm. And um, we had another pad system out that was called our pain-free pad. It's no longer being manufactured. Um, and so the essential line, it didn't replace it, but it was like a, a interim interim. Yeah. For, for lack of better terms. And um, we were doing, I've had three cats of my own and we were doing videotaping for promos and things like that. And we were working with the dogs and my one female kitty who does not do anything with my dogs, especially the one that was sitting on my lap, kept jumping, <laughs> kept jumping on my lap because I had the half wrap pad. We were as the yeah. same thing. Literally, we actually had to shift our focus to taping because to taping her. Because she was like, 
I'm sitting on this, you, 30 minutes, 30 minutes before we could proceed because she was just like, no, oh, yeah. No, they know. They know. Yeah. I mean, Lexi, yeah. when I do my sessions over the phone, she'll sit, she'll come out of another room and sit next to me or on my, my feet while the right. session, because I know she wants the energy. But yeah. when I have the pad on and it's me and she just got done with her, she'll come out and she'll just start taking her nose and poking me. Okay. And I'll go, no, no, you just had this. It's my turn now. So she, they do <laughs> want it. They do want it. Correct. Correct. Yeah. They absolutely love that you talk about, um, your intention, your energy, the breathing, the pictures, um, yes. and and what you put out there. So how did you get on that path? Gosh, I have a spiritual teacher that I found when I was 22. And uh, the thought directs energy and that love is why we're here. Right. Um, you know, after all these years, it's been 40 years now that I have been working with her. And all of this is about knowing what you're looking at, knowing what your mission is and getting after it. Yeah. My dog has a similar, you know, a, a, all of my animals have had that kind of energy and it's because I'm the, I'm the leader, you know? So yeah. I expect a lot from them and I give them a lot. So we just, we're in this thing together. I try to make this very clear without too much pressure with my patients, especially if they're not used to this kind of language that right. you, you give, you know, you get what you give and, and your intention, if you're thinking, Oh my God, I got to take this, I got to take this thing. And I go, Hey, don't talk that way. That's very negative. You're expecting that thing to save you. You're expecting that thing, that process, that device, nothing is outside of our realm, but we can have assistance. That's how I see the pads and the multi-light. Yeah, I, I love multi-light. I love it because of the three variances, the green, the blue and then the red. I love the hierarchy of the depths that it goes to. So I always take that with me and I'm very overprotective of my pad. I don't want anybody cringing it or stuffing <laughs> it behind their back. So I go, okay, I'm going to show you how to do it. Will you leave it? No, I, I never loan out the pad, but I, I'll loan out the multi-light. Um, yeah. Yeah. The, well, I mean, it's indestructible. So you right, can't. Right. And so to answer your question expeditiously, I think it was a grooming process that I went through that affects everything I do now. The bedside manner for painting, the bedside manner for acupuncture, herbs. I, I'm a chef. Everything requires presentation. And if you understand your product and you know what you've done, then you can lay it out very succinctly. This is what you need to do. And don't go, you know, if I spill something, paint, I'm not going to take lacquer thinner to it. I'm going right. to take water. And you right. start with the most sensible. So a lot of the people that I talk to about their pets and photonics, they'll text me and say, what do I need to do? I just did this. And I said, start easy. Go with the dermatological layer. Go to the green. You don't, not red. And I go, why would you start with the big gun? Right. Go with the green. Lexi right. had a nine minute session with the green and yeah. she, she moved so much easier the next morning. And then that afternoon, the green again, I didn't go any further until three or four days later. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, and I'm sure you'll find like, and we do a lot of work with horses. So every horse is every horse, every animal is different, right? And what their tolerance right. levels are and, and also what their pain levels are. And that's, right. I think the thing is, you know, to get across is that if an animal is in pain, they are in sympathetic mode. They are not in parasympathetic mode. So yes. parasympathetic mode is the rest, digest, recover mode. <laughs> right. You cannot start the healing process if you are not in parasympathetic mode. And the, that's what the green light does is like, okay, let's put green on. Let's get that nervous system calmed down right. to a point where the body can start healing and then go after it with the other colors. Right, right. I, that's I, exactly I, so. Yeah. I, I want I, to work I, with horses. Um, I, I was raised with horses on a dairy farm in Illinois and the tan about taking one of your programs and getting into horses. Yeah. Where in Illinois? Uh, dairy farm, right. It was in Huntley, Crystal Lake, Marengo, yeah. Rockford. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and then we moved to Coeur d'Alene, Northern Idaho when I was 13 night and day, those two States. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in, um, Naperville. Oh gosh. Yes. My stepfather and grandfather built houses in that division. 
Yes. 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 And I had friends that had horses that were in Huntley. So I would, I didn't have horses growing up, but every, you know, once every couple months I got to go by their horses and it just, it's a tiny fun. world. <laughs> tiny, yeah. tiny my, my, grandparents, world. my grandparents lived there for 30 years. We lived there for 10. And yes. so it's Benching Road, that whole area. Ah! Yeah. There we yeah. go. I, I, yes, yes. Um, as a professional, because um, as a professional, what question do you find yourself answering the most about your way of dealing with your patients? I, I think it's very much what we've been talking about, changing their thought forms, allowing this idea that deep four or five layers back, they've got this idea, whether it's their their dog or their cat has cancer and all they're focusing on is on the negativity of the cancer. I said, you have to see that lifting away. You have to plant that image of visual creative visualization. Yes. Um, there's amazing books out, but the one that I've always been impressed with was from 25 years ago. Shotki Guan has creative visualizations and it's an amazing book because you can be proficient in it and expertise, and you're still going to glean something wonderful about it. Uh, or you can be brand new to it. So when you think, like we mentioned earlier, thought directs energy. If you think sick and tired, you get sick and tired. Um, yes. You have to start looking at your healing model and how it's working for you. So it's about training the brain. Um, another question I get a lot is if this is going to be uh, harmful, which I'm always surprised that people ask right. me that. Harmful. Yeah. And I said, how could it be harmful? We're electromagnetically charged with the iron of blood. Yeah. Yeah. So, and we're not, often we're not just dealing with these episodes, these happenings. These can be patterns that are set from a long time ago. So getting to the bottom of it is being patient. Um, start out small. Don't overdo it. I had, you know, a woman use uh, something on her dog and she said, oh my God, he's already working better. I'm going to do it five times. I go, no, no. You're just shaking hands now. You're just introducing it. You don't want the dog to get fatigued. And the other third point I, I mentioned to them, if you're going to use the pad, don't use homeopathy, aromatherapy, and acupuncture, or we're not going to be able to tell what the pad is doing. Right. You right. Just one, one, one goal for each moment that you're using it so that you can track the progress. I'm a big, I'm a big proponent of tracking what's working, what's not. Yeah. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. It's so funny that you mentioned that book because the creative visualization, because it's been a book that I, I actually, I'm cleaning, I was cleaning my office and that's what I was looking for. I'm like, I know I just ran across that thing. It is She's like wonderful. amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah and I don't think many people realize how long she's been around and that all of the, um, spiritual teachings out there today, a lot of it, she's been teaching for Yes. Way before it, you know, what they're teaching today is not new. It's been around for a long, long it, time. It really has. And, you know, that's part of the time component for planet. You get an idea, you get a burst, and then you get involved with something else. Years yeah. later, you meet somebody and you realize you met them a long time ago. And until you're ready, just like the healing opportunity, until you're ready to let it go, no amount of devices are going to assist if you're not paying attention. So I try to center my people, especially when they're working on animals, that they're so clouded with emotions because it's their first horse or their only cat. I say, you have to get that out of the way. That's actually taking up too much real estate in your brain. Right. You've got to just deal with the basics. So Absolutely. Um, you know, a lot of people, I don't know if you've heard of Michael Singer, Mickey Singer. Oh. the surrender experiment so he's yeah. actually right up the road from us he lives about 45 minutes away and he's got free online um lectures three days a week and that's all he talks about he's like the brain has so much chatter like it's just sort of like um if we let it rule the roost then our life is just going to be sort of haywire and just you know emotionally just ups and downs and and we're not going to be as equipped to handle it because let's face it there nobody has a life that is stress free everybody no. has situations come in doesn't matter who you are how much money you have how long you meditate 
Right. You are going to have situations that are you are going to have to handle. And it's about how you handle those situations. And the mind has so much to play in it. And the more that we can um, not let that little voice in our head be the ruler of our emotions and thoughts and feelings, um, the better prepared we are when those situations do happen. Right, right. I had heard years ago that you can sit down and pray for God. Prayer works. It's wonderful. You can sit down and pray for God and promise a bunch of things that you're going to stop doing if you only yeah. get this one thing. Yeah. But meditation is when you clear the mind and yes. God talks to you. Yes. So I think a large part of everything I do is geared on this finding the spiritual teacher, making application, meditating, and being a little bit more mindful of what's going on here. What old pattern am I feeling? What reenactment yes. is happening here? So that that that's one thing. The meditation is huge. And I do respond to people with, if you really want to get to the bottom of your answers of why you keep getting this back problem, see, that's why the needles over the phone work so effortlessly. I get a sense like you, intuitive. I can close my eyes. I place myself 3,000 miles up on a mountaintop because if somebody that I don't know is calling me from Germany and they've got something, I say, please, Lord, let me be sensitive enough to pick up what's going on. Yep, and when I put my back to them and I'm not clouded with getting something, right. I get the system of where they're blocked. And I can say, I feel one, one man I talked to, I said, gosh, I feel your whole left side is just, just smashed. Um, something heavy. And I asked if it was metal and it said, no. Uh, so, and he goes, well, that's funny. I was thrown off of a horse and it fell back on me mm -hmm. and crushed my left side. So yay, that, I mean, I, I felt, I felt that. So right. meditation is a big component that I suggest to people, not only to calm the mind, but for that exact message that you just said, that this talks you in and out of things all the time. It's only job is a computer. It's supposed to just break down things. It's not supposed to give you guidance on those biggers. That's your soul talking that gives you the guidance. So, yes, uh, this and all our, works. Yes, and our computer has been programmed by our lifetime experiences and a lot of and and childhood patterning. And so, if you grew up with parents that always said, "Oh, we can <laughs> never afford that. We can never afford that. We're so poor. We can never afford that." Yeah. By the time you're adult, you don't even realize that you have that pro programmed into your computer unless you have some sort of awareness. Right, and, right. Um, you know, it's so fascinating. I I didn't plan on talking about the brain, but like, oh my God, the brain is so amazing. And, it, and we have the ability to change our computer program, but it takes a lot of mindfulness. It takes a lot of awareness. Um, and like you said, in order to get to that place, you've got to quiet that voice inside your head. And yeah. for a lot of people like meditation. And when I know for me, like even talking meditation, if you just turn on a meditation tape or a song for three minutes, that's three minutes of peace that you normally wouldn't get in a day. So yeah, exactly. It's, you don't have to, I think a lot, meditation gets a bad rap and like people that meditate for hours on end, you know, I got friends that follow Joe Dispenza and they'll go to a weekend meditation retreat and um, yep. that, that's great. Like it, it's awesome, but you don't have to do that. And you don't have to be that. You just have to just give your, give your brain a three minute time out. And exactly will be amazed at the change that it makes. Yeah, I, and I show up. This is what's different, I believe. I don't know any acupuncturists that do needles over the phone or for as long as I have been doing it. But right. I do this with the animals. Before I even approach them or touch them, I already send out a tranquil, peaceful zone. Yeah. And it's not threatening at all. So I, I can see and I and, you know, like you said, everything involves awareness and consciousness. In fact, you cannot shift your consciousness until the awareness has happened. Right. It's like programming for something that you don't know how to name or, or call it. You have to have it first before you can change it. So I send that with Lexi all the time. I watch her all the time when I send her a message of 
we're going to be going. She just recently got bit by a black dog. So now all black dogs are high on her list. And before I, I see the dog before she does, and I send her a picture, this is nothing to be worried about. Yeah, We're just going to go on our walk. Now yeah. I'm just now training with her because that, that bite happened recently. Right. And so, and, and like I said, she's a Burmese mountain doodle. She's her dad's. Oh, wow. a so she's Swiss and French. She shouldn't have any German in her. <laughs> Boy, did she go back on that memory? She goes back on that memory, and I just say, sit and calm yourself. Yeah, I love it's that. It's working 50 50 now. It's working 50 50. Yeah, well, and you know, we do that with our horses. So, um, you know, they, they're like they see pictures and that's part of like we we took an animal communication class got years and years ago and the way that we learned to communicate with animals was just pictures um and sending them pictures but receiving pictures back and being open to see the pictures mm -hmm. and so i love the fact that um you're very strong on that and just letting people have that awareness of what picture are you sending your animal? Because most people don't have a clue. Right. They they right. don't have a clue. And they respond so well to you getting images. But if you start practicing this a little, even just a little bit, then your intuition will start to wake up. And then right. and then they can because they're, they're communicating with us too, and they can be sending us pictures. And if we're open oh, yeah. to receiving them, we're going to receive them. Right, right. And I think, you know, when I first started my practice, I moved from New Mexico to Boston. And in Harvard, I had my first clinic. It was pediatric. And I remember a, a, a parent came in and she goes, you know, I noticed in your waiting room, you don't have any like preschool, Dr. Seuss you have leisure and traveling. And I said, I know those magazines are for you because I wanted the parents to stay in the waiting room right. because the minute they went in with the kid, the kid's fine. The kid is on board and we are jiving. I I, I speak and think like the kids. And so I'd say, well, so what do you think we should do today? I get them involved. They have to be involved. When Absolutely. I do my acupuncture, I always leave the combination odd because the body goes, hmm, you have two over here and one over here. I should get involved. And so the body gets involved huh, so I love with, the, with the kids. I did the same thing. Where do you think we should go? And, you know, they could be psychic, but I was helping them encourage looking inside their bodies. Cause I meet a lot of 60, 70, 80 year olds that never do that. So right. the parent came in one time, second time, and the boy was seven and he was fine the first time without the parent, but she came in. And when I unpacked the blister pack of the needle, she went, Oh, she reacted just like that. And then he looked at her, looked at me and started bawling. Yeah. And I said, well, can you wait for a second? You know, I'm just going to, we're just going to use a little wooden pallet and a little hammer. I'm just going to do your needles today with that. So I had some backups to do. And then I took her outside and I said, this is why I ask if you can be in the waiting room. Yeah. yeah. They, they, yeah. they're all so on board when it's just us, but they yeah. look at the parent gasping. I mentioned that when people are worried about their cat and they're overdoing the pads and I go, you know, your biggest thing is to go blank, yeah. just be neutral, just go in and, and see how you want the result to be. Right. So, Correct. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Oh my God. You are so amazing. You're so well, amazing. I love I, it. I would love to come down with you guys and take your course with horses to be yeah. certified. I would love to do that. So yeah. I'm trying to figure out how I can do that. Like I'm in Montana now for a couple of days. I'll be in Portland, Oregon for the month and then I'll be back home in Idaho. And so I'm trying to lighten how much exertion I do with other things that I'm, I, I'm a master in it. I really don't need to do painting off of eaves anymore or roofs. So right. I, I really do want to check in with your schedule and see where I can fit that in. Yes, we would, we would love to have, I you. would love to do it love to have you if you could leave our listeners with a couple tips of what they can do i think we've already sort of talked about it but if you want to summarize um what would you say to them of working with their animals yeah uh going in with the idea that you can achieve exactly what you're there to to fix or to assist the animal in setting an example because you are the leader. I mean, I meet so many parents and I meet so many people that own animals that let that animal run the show. And I go, you are not helping here. 
that right. animal is looking to you to guide. So those two things are really huge. And I would suggest them getting into a tranquil, you know, it's hard to find space here without politics and fires and bombings. Um, find a space where you can just start five minutes where you clear the mind. Every time a thought comes into your idea or in your brain, see a little tiny pea that gets thrown in a bowl. And if all you hear is peas hitting a bowl, <laughs> then that tells you you've got some more time to spend. So th those three, I believe. Oh, awesome. Yay. I love that, Sherry. Um, how, if people are interested in getting a hold of you and having a remote session with you, um, what is the best way for them to contact you? Um, email's good. I also answer all calls. I have a thing about, you know, medical and, and animals. You know, I always get back same day when someone calls awesome. me about that stuff. So my, um, my email address and my phone number. And what is that? Uh, email address is my whole name, lowercase, okay. Sherry, C-H-E-R-I-E, -E, no yep. space, Menching, M-E-N-S-C-H-I-N-G, at Yahoo. And okay. my cell phone is 206-459-6626. Thank you so much. This has been Thank so much too. fun. We're going to have to schedule another session where we can talk about more fabulous energetic things because it I, we barely scratched the surface <laughs> it was really great seeing you again and uh, uh thank you so much for asking me yes absolutely thank you for watching this edition of photonic health presents health made simple don't forget to like share and subscribe and ring the bell for notifications for all new photonic health videos